What is going on, everybody? It is me, Tristan. Me, Jackson. We are here with a morning cup at 7 11 a.m., September 10th, 2021, giving you a new, new coffee from Broad Street. Sorry, Broad Sheet Coffee Roasting over in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And Jack's going to tell us a little bit more about what we got going on. Uh, so this is a washed Ethiopian, and forgive me if I don't pronounce his name correctly, it is a weight go goo goo coffee. It's from it's a Guji from Ethiopia, and it is from the coffee producers. They're the Jabril brothers. There's three of them, and um they've been working in a new region of Ethiopia that's not traditionally a coffee producer and their their work has been really good. Yeah. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, um, Broadsheet Coffee Roaster was founded in 2017 and is located right behind Harvard y Yard in Cambridge, Massachusetts. They're Cambridge's first and only specialty coffee roastery. Um, their name comes from pa the paper that uh, the nearby Harvard Printing Press published as a way to spread meaningful news and cheer almost 400 years ago. Um, they are committed to showcasing the very best in consciously sourced coffee. Uh, they are um, at the cutting edge of roasting and extraction sciences and are always striving to improve. Um, yeah, sounds like they have a pretty uh, strong um, relationship with being consciously sourced and kind of being there for the whole coffee industry as a whole. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like they're a very big team, pretty small still. I did find out that they uh, sell what's called snap chilled coffee in cans that you can order online and they'll send it to you um, using their like main coffee that they use every day. Hmm. So. What'd you get from the sniffs? Uh, so the, the dry sniffs um, smells like your your typical washed Ethiopian. Yeah, um, good, not overpowering, not overpoweringly sweet. You get that nice um, chocolate. You know, I don't know if it's a chocolatey flavor. Kind of smells chocolate. A little bit, a little nutty, a little peanut buttery. Yeah, not too peanut buttery. Well, maybe a little almondy. Yeah. Um, and it's just everything you come to really look for in a washi Ethiopian, at least in the sniff so far. Yeah. The, I know the flavor profile. Tristan does not. So we're gonna we're gonna see how good he is on that. How accurate they are. We'll find out. All right. First sip, here it goes. Mm. Ooh. Punches you with some flavor right at the front. Very, very fruity, um, but not in a Tart way, juicy, juicy, it's very yeah. juicy. Mm. Um, let me let me get another sniff or swig in. Hmm. I'm getting a nice bitter finish. It's nice. It's a nice, well balanced coffee. Um, very um, sweet, got a little bit of sour, um, then finishes off with a nice dry finish like I'm drinking a uh, a nice soft blanc. I'm gonna I go with- a little citrusy in there too. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit, just I'm, a hint. I'm gonna go a grapefruit finish, okay? Um, it's got a, it's so it's not a berry, as in like a cherry or stone fruit for me. I'd put it more in a, a berry berry, mm -hmm. not a not a seeded berry on the inside. Maybe like a strawberry. Um, Jack thinks I'm cheating, by the way. Oh, I don't think you're cheating. You're, you just have an impeccable palate. <laughs> um, I'm kind of getting a strawberry kiwi taste. Mm. Um, my favorite of the Fruitopia flavors. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember uh, those. So I'm going to go strawberry kiwi and a nice subtle hint of grapefruit. 
Um, but it's a very, very good coffee. Very, very. This is a summer coffee for sure. I believe they they described it as a light and delicate coffee drinker. Let me see. It is. It's a little sour. Subtle and delicate is what they called this. Subtle, maybe. Um, I get a lot of that, like, I don't really find it to be all that subtle because you get punched in the face with these flavors. I, I, I get that underripe strawberry. Like, the, the, I, I retract my statement on a little bit of sour. It's a lot of sour. Um, yeah. So if you've ever had a strawberry that is just before, it's got a little bit of that green on top, mm -hmm. not fully ripened. Still tastes good. Mm. A little firmer, not soft. And not, not quite the sour of like a Michigan strawberry yeah. where it's like you're getting that super ripe, juicy sour. Um, this is like a, an under ripened yeah, sour. Yeah, just like it was picked under ripe and then shipped from wherever, California or yeah, Mexico or something like that. Wherever they, yeah, I mean. Are you ready for the flavor though? I am. Strawberry. Mm. There we go. Wildflower honey. Oh. And I guess Meyer lemon, so citrusy, yes, which is lemon. Okay, the I sour. can see the lemon. I can see the lemon. That you know that that really points out to the sour there because it is kind of a lemony, citrusy sour. You know, now that now that you have mentioned the flavors, I do get. You remember when Mom used to make lemon hot water, basically hot toddies without the whiskey? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, you're sick. Drink this. This will this will cure you. <laughs> This actually tastes like that. Like I can, I can actually taste the like lemon and then the uh, the honey, the wildflower honey. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's kind of a a, a watered down honey, yeah. really. Not like as pungent as the honey you normally get, or like the the clover honey. Or wow, um, that's crazy. That after you said lemon, it definitely tastes like lemon, like raw lemon juice squeeze right there. Mixed with water with a hint of strawberry. With a hint of strawberry and a little bit of hint of honey. Uh, my preference would be a little bit more honey. Um, it has a really dry finish. Um, Which is kind of crazy because it's so juicy up front. Yeah. Like usually um, when I drink a juicy coffee, it's pretty much that way the whole time. Like it's, and, and so like, I guess when I, I, I know we've described this before, but when I'm talking about a juicy coffee, it's uh, it's not dry, it's wet, which sounds funny because you're drinking a liquid, but um, coffee especially can be dry yeah. on, on not even just the finish, but the whole process. This one's pretty dry so, at the end. Yeah, it, which I guess it shocks me because it just comes out of nowhere and just, just, just finishes super dry. Um, just imagine if you're drinking like a, a Riesling. Yeah. At the end of it, how that's dry or something like, like that. Like a Sauv Blanc kind of reminds me yeah. of a Sauv Blanc where it's a little bit of sour, a little bit of that citric acid up front. Then it just finishes dry. It's a little more drier than I would like. I think I got my ratings in my head um, and we'll see how it matches up. Um, let's go with sniffs first. Mm. And the way we do ratings again, it's one through 10, no sevens. Because seven is a way to be safe and make your decision. So you give a seven, people are gonna tend to go towards a seven because it's a safe pick. It's okay. Doing no sevens makes you make a decision whether it's good or not. Because there's a big difference between a six and an eight. That's right. true. What do you got? Sniffs. Sniffs, um, I'm gonna be honest. Not that I was underwhelmed, but it's pretty standard, really. Um, pretty standard, really. Gonna go with a five out of ten. Um, smells good. No, it's the five is not an indication of bad. It just uh, didn't wow me. Smells it's good. It's not unique. Yeah, it's it's, it's not a unique uh, um, smell. Yeah, it, it's just and bad. honestly, wet sniffs. Not having it. I, there wasn't. There wasn't really a lot. There, there's nothing really that came and and you know just wowed me. Um, there's some coffees that when you brew them, when you're making it, it just pops with with aroma. And this didn't really do that for me. Yeah. So so yeah, I I I'll give it a five. Five out of ten. Um. Yeah. So I would say five. 
I've described this with Josh uh, on here before. Um, five doesn't mean bad. I think in the realm of the specialty coffee, how we're doing it, 10 being amazing, right? Seven being like, yeah, specialty coffee. This is, yeah, pretty average specialty coffee. Um, and then you're getting into the lower end of specialty coffee from five to six, that kind of range where it's like, it is specialty coffee. It is um, unique, but it's not, not really tickling me very well. So um, five is, I would say, slightly above average of coffee. Like your Starbucks is a five, in my opinion. So you're saying this is just as good as Starbucks? Um, Yeah, what you get from their coffee, um, like their beans, I would say, I would say I'd probably pick this over Starbucks, but I'm not driving to the store to get this and being like, I need that. Um, this would be a good change of pace. Good. Like if you're if you're coming up learning into specialty coffee, this is a good one to start with. It's very safe. Yeah. Um, but as I'm about to reveal on my flavor notes, I would give it a six out of 10. Um, it's, yeah, I can't give this an eight. No, there's no way I could. Um, it's And it's not bad coffee, so that's why it's a six out of five. We've also tasted some really great washed Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. And I just, this, this is a solid cup of coffee, but it's not wowing me, it's not blowing me away. It's not um, wanting me to, I don't want another cup of this. So, yeah. It's good, but not, not that good, in my opinion. Um, but it's better than a lot of bad coffee out there. And I'd say it's better than most coffees. It's, it's very unique. It really, you really do get that strawberry, uh, wild berry, honey, and um, Meyer lemon. Um, like it's there. It tastes just like a hot toddy without the whiskey. Um, Maybe we're just over summer flavors, you know? And that could be it too. It's fall uh, time, you know, the, the town. I had to wear a jacket this morning. It was chilly. Yeah, it could be. This is definitely a summer coffee. So drinkability. Um, I'm also going to just have to give it a. I'm going to have to give it a five. I was going to give it a six. So, so with drinkability, we include price into this, right? Yeah. Yes.